was a lot of fun. Um, you know, we love being competitive, making each other better. And, um, you know, it's going to be chirping around, especially when, you know, it's uh, blue versus white. You know, we both want to win. So it was a lot of fun. I think we got a lot out of it. A lot of guys got better. A lot of guys got a chance to make plays. I hope we did. They kind of came back at the end. I don't know. So I hope we did. For you, you know, a guy who doesn't play in a preseason game, you have those joint practices like last week and then uh, scrimmage like today. Like, how much better is that for you? Yeah, I actually um, enjoyed it, man, uh, to get out there, uh, be with the team and fly around. I haven't done it in a long time. And then going against something different. Um, I felt like, uh, you know, we were uh, back and forth uh, practicing against those guys. Uh, they're good, good defense. They fly around. But, um, you know, I was happy to be out there to get some reps, um, be able to uh, be, be with the offense and go out there and try to make plays. How were teams, uh, I guess, divided up today? How, 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 who ended up, how did you decide who ended up on the blue, who ended up on the white? Uh, I think they did uh, a draft and selected. it. Um, I don't know who was drafting, but whoever played the blue team t did a pretty good job, even though the white team, you know, makes some plays at the end. But, um, you know, just trying to make it fun, make practice fun, make it competitive. And as you can see, you know, we, we loved it and we enjoyed it. Derek, as you get ready for September 10th, and your timeline from the start of camp until then, you feel like you're where, where you want to be or is there things you still want to work on between now and then? Oh, it's going to continue to work until that time to suit up and um, play a game. That's always a mindset, and that's all. That's always how it's, how it's going to be for me. It's continue to work until it's time. How are you looking forward to this offense and and, and maybe maybe having some uh, maybe some more room to run out on the field this year? Well, really just really just being out here and um, continue to polish things, continue to get better. Continue to pay attention to the details and, you know, let it all come together uh, as camps end and then we're leading on to uh, leading to week one. But I'm, I'm excited for everybody. I'm excited uh, football's back. Can't wait to, to get out there and, and play in a real game. But, you know, we're still working right now, so that's the main focus. I think guys are still focused on getting better until that time comes. A veteran like yourself, like this time of year, you get to the dog days of camp. You're not really getting any live action in preseason games. What's the excitement level looking ahead to September? And what's is there any, like, impatience there? Um, no, I mean, you don't want to rush anything. Um, uh, nothing you want to be great happens overnight. I think you just got to work through it, work hard. Um, come out here every day and be, and be willing and be willing to work with, willing to improve, be a great leader, be a great teammate, and make everybody better until that time comes. Just focus head down and um, you no know, ton of vision until it's time to uh, suit up and play week one. Coach says he really likes the way Julius practices every day, the way, the way he finishes it. What do you see from him out of the practice? We see the game stuff, but what do you see him practice? Yeah, I mean, he practices how he plays. He's full goal all the time, always running to the ball, always hustling, um, always shows up on film. And um, I think it uh, showed uh, this last last Saturday against Minnesota. And I'm happy for him because he works hard. And um, I told him eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen for him, and I'm glad it did uh, last Saturday. What's the feeling, I guess, I don't know if you if you played maybe preseason games over in your career, maybe haven't played recently, what's, what's the feeling as far as whether you need it to be sharp for the season or you don't need it? I know usually that's a coach's decision for everybody. What, what's your kind of your mindset on how much you need to work? Um, I mean, if they need me to go in there, I, I have no problem playing in the preseason. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you're at practice, you got to get to work in as well and make sure you're prepared and work as hard as you can. That's what I try to do with the reps that I get in practice going against our defense, um, you know, because they give us a great look. They're a great uh, run defense and a great defense overall. So, you know, anything I can to do to help me get better, um, whether it's catching, just, just doing anything and um, getting ready for the season like I've done in the previous years. I thought you did a great job. I know I can't do nothing like that, but uh, it's great to have a change up and um, uh, have a back that can be explosive. And I know when he hit the ground, he was he took off. So you know, that was that was that was great to see. And happy that he was able to hit, find the end zone. And um, you know, I think he played great last Saturday. You've been around Julius a couple years now too. It seems like you kind of turned the way you some of these games in practice. How have you seen him develop over the last few years? I think Julius just came in, is just ready to work. Um, I'm never being satisfied and uh, continue to be, be hungry and want more reps. And um, whether it's on offense or on special teams, he just does a great job and he practices hard and everybody notices it. And um, I'm here to, you know, be a, a big brother, be anything I can do to, to help them and help bring forward their game a little bit more and, you know, just help them in any way, any way possible. So, you know, I try to help those guys and they've been doing a great job. They've been working hard and I'm very proud to see it paying off.
You see 281 yards rushing, even though you didn't play Saturday night. How much does that kind of let you know that this team still has its bread and butter? Y'all yeah, almost sneak and put some pads on because you know, I wanted some of that. But, um, you know, it's great to see them guys flying off the ball, um, playing our style of football, going out there and playing um, the way we want to play. And, um, you know, got receivers going there and making blocks, um, uh, knocking safeties down so Julius to get a big run. Tight ends coming off the ball, getting big blocks. I just credit to the way they work. Uh, to our coaching staff and you know how we are uh, as a whole and how we come out here and try to make each other better when it leads to a game. Oh, you know I did. You know I did. Definitely did. I just looked down and I said, you know, you know. So yeah, but we we just joked about it. But I, I thought I thought he ran. I thought he ran uh, ran Frank ran well and um you know he was two yards short of a hundred, but um he still did a great job. But you know we can't get hawked though. How important can Westco and Odakoya be? For you potentially this year, that they make it. And they've been doing a really good job. They come out the ball. Um, they're, they're physical. They try to finish, try to do everything that the coaches ask them to do. And that's all you want as far as the teammate. Guys who want to go in there and be, and be willing, um, want to be physical and play our style. So, for, you. for sure. What, uh, Derek, sorry, oh. Derek, one more thing. What, uh, is there anything said by Coach Vrabel? We're talking to a, couple, but to a couple of guys about Caleb Farley's situation and just as his teammate. What kind of encouragement can you offer to him? Yeah, just praying for Caleb. Um, I was actually just uh, we was probably the last one in the locker room last night, just 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 hanging around. But um, you know, I just found out the news. Uh, praying for him, keeping him in our prayers. Uh, I praying for his family. Um, send my condolences. All we all send our condolences. Uh, just a tragic situation. I don't want to speak too much on it because I don't know all the details. But um, I just can't. I don't know, I can't describe the way he probably is feeling right now. And um, just let him know we're praying for him. We love him. And, you know, we're all here for him if he needs somebody to lean on. Thanks, appreciate Thanks, Dave. The chance to tackle, I guess, live. Um, it's been a while since I've done that. Uh, I'm really – I'm just – I'm kind of uh, indifferent when it comes to the, the preseason games. But obviously, like, I trust, you know, Brave's judgment and, you know, what he sees in me as a player right now. And so – if obviously if he thinks it would benefit me to go out there, then obviously I'll be out there. But yeah, just the the tackling aspect of it. Um, yeah, the tackling aspect of it. You know, I feel great. I feel like camp's going great. Um, you know, every day I come out here, you obviously know it's not going to be perfect. Um, but I'm just focusing on and taking advantage of all the reps that I get and, you know, getting to where I need to get to uh, come that first game. But no, I think camp's going well. Um, I feel like we're just out here, you know, us out on the front floor building that chemistry. And I just feel like I'm just really just taking it one day at a time, coming out here, trying to improve. How Every third day has been a you as far as coming off the injury this year. How have things, things been different for you as opposed to the previous time to get ready for the season? Um, I mean, there's not really – like, I'm going to be honest, I don't really think about my knee at all anymore. Like, it's just – there really is no difference. Like, right now, I'm just literally focused on improving in every aspect that I can improve on um, so that I'm ready to go at my peak performance come game one. Um, so it's kind of built-in rest. You, you surprised that you haven't needed a day off or they haven't forced you to take a day off along the way? Or No, I mean, I think Braves does a, a great job of – you know, identifying, you know, what players need what each day. Um, I think he knows that, like, every player is different. Um, but, no, I think he does a good job of making sure that we're all getting the work that we need to get in while also, you know, making sure that, you know, he's taking care of us. You know, I think he, he has a good idea of, uh, you know, what it takes. Carol, what did you think about the, the scrimmage today with no joint practices? What were you able to get out of something like this? No, nah, I mean – I felt like today was a great day. You could see how competitive it was out there on the field. And, you know, obviously it was hot, but I feel like we all just went out there and, and competed. You know, we didn't pay attention to it. And we just all went out there and went to work. And I felt like it was a great day of practice. Can you, can you, get, can you ramp up the same type of intensity going against in your teammates in an inter-squad game as you can in a joint practice with another team? Yeah, I mean, the only difference is you just don't know uh, – you just don't know, like, like obviously we've gone against each other all camp, so like you kind of know things about your teammates, obviously as a player. Um, but I, I would say the only difference is you just don't know what you're getting when you go against another team um, at a practice. Um, but I feel like we always put in good work 
every time we step out on the field. And I think that's why we have success here, because we practice so hard against each other. Who picked the teams, and what did you think of the balance? Uh, I mean, I don't know how they went about the draft and how they did that, but I felt like it was good balance. It was competitive the whole time. I mean, it was a close game the entire the entire scrimmage. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I mean, it was a good balance. It was competitive. You curious why you got picked? <laughs> I mean, nah, I mean. Disgruntled about your draft status? Nah, I mean. Did they pronounce your name correctly? Nah, I mean, I don't. They didn't say, I don't know, but no, nah, I was happy, you know, obviously where I ended up. Nah, Braves told us about it in the team, man. We went over it. Uh, not yet. Braves just let us know at the end of practice, uh, so I got to make sure that I reach out to him. But nah, I mean, it's like I couldn't imagine that happening uh, to me. Um, you know, I feel for him, obviously, and he'll be in my uh, prayers. But um, nah, I mean, it's just a. You just feel for him, for sure. Well, I don't think that's important. I think what's important is that uh, we, we do everything that we can to support Caleb, his family, um, you know, and, and do everything that we can to, to be there for him, support him. That, that's the most important thing is to focus on him uh, and, and not any of the, you know, the, the, everything else is, is pretty trivial. Well, he was over there this morning. Did the team help him uh, get over there? Because it's not easy to get there you know, that quickly. Uh, again, what's most important is that uh, we do everything that we can to support him um, emotionally, uh, teammates, coaches, organization. You know, just uh, shocking, but but also got to got to focus on Caleb and his family and what we can do to support them and and, and be here for him. Mm -hmm. For the scrimmage uh, coach, just today, is it what you imagined it being since you kind of had this idea? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we came and, and we came to work with the right uh, frame of mind uh, with those players and coaches, and you know, it was great energy, really good work. I thought we tried to take care of each other and you know, good plays on both sides. Well, we had a tough decision to uh, change out kickers. Just trying to find somebody that can. Can help us. We had a draft, uh, stretch and big T. You know, I tried to massage it a little bit where I felt like I needed to, but stretch picked and big T picked. I feel like it was a pretty even split and a pretty yeah. competitive practice. Yeah, absolutely. I think at one point in time, you know, however, I was keeping score 36 33 and you know, I thought there was good plays on both sides and you know, had a few penalties that showed up on third down, had a couple X plays, you know. So those are things that, that uh, you know, can be good obviously for the offense and not so good for the defense. But I thought it was very competitive back and forth, uh, good energy. Yeah, I mean, Ryan continues to have good command and you know, as long as we can protect him. You know, get guys into spots, and you know, we can help them out on the back end and, and, and catch them. But yeah, there's been good command, good good leadership, good performance. It seemed like Tier was in the middle of the field goal scuffle after he was in the middle of something in in Minnesota. Are you concerned that he's not the message not getting through to him in terms of? Do not you have any stuff? idea what happened? I, I don't. I'm asking good. That. Well, no, you assumed. You said he was in the middle of it. So when you figure it out, you can ask me a question. Is that what you think? I, is that what you think? I think he threw okay. it. Okay. Well, Could you tell us what happened? In no, this you, you just assume and you went in a different direction. So when you figure it out, then you can ask a question. Well, we didn't bring him in. Well, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Which we lucked out. We, we absolutely lucked out because there's not a better human being. You know, we got great people around here, but Thomas is, you know, there's not anybody better that, that uh, cares about this team, that uh, works his tail off, and uh, has, has really taken advantage of those reps at the line of scrimmage. And, and 
has had good practice again against our guys and then Minnesota and that carried over to the game uh, wrestling and tangling with um, you know some of those big guys on the edge of the line of scrimmage so uh, his hard work has paid off and that's been uh, really cool to see and you know you'd like for good things to happen to, to great people he said he kind of made it his personal mission to really get involved in the run game black and white well, he didn't have much of a choice. It, uh, you know, Thomas isn't the, the, the fastest tight end that we have on the roster. So he had two choices, either get involved in the pass, which we probably would have steered him to the direction of being strong in a run game. So he's got a great frame, strong player, um, good length, um, and, and that run blocking suits him a little better. What do you, uh, I guess you lost your cuts a week from the day. What do you tell young guys who have done well and other guys who may be feeling – Knowing that that date's on the horizon, about just continue to focus, not think about what's ahead. Well, you can only you know control the things that you can control each day. How you come to work, uh, how you improve. You know, if there were mistakes that showed up in the in practice or they showed up in the game, you know, making sure that those get corrected so that you're not uh, an error repeater. You don't make the same mistake twice. Uh, can you take coaching? Do you continue to show improvement, or are you taking a deep breath or? You know, you're looking around and counting numbers and trying to figure out all the things that aren't important. You've seen a lot of snaps and reps from these guys in practice and the game over the last month or so. Like, how much more over the next three days could they do to move the needle? I mean, certainly the game is important. We'll practice tomorrow. The game's important. Uh, you really start to see, I think, the, the special teams is what we've talked about a lot with the games. You can only recreate so much out here. You know, so the special teams and the ability to tackle uh, some of those things that the game is, is, is critical. So I think you can, you can see a lot. Mason's done a great, great job sticking around, mm -hmm. contributing to this team without spending much time on the 53. How's a guy like that break through now, given an opportunity with some injuries? Yeah, I mean, we'll see where you know, he can line up at any different spot. You know, he's been a punt returner for us. He'll get some opportunities to do that in the game. Uh, on Friday, um, he, he's reliable, um, dependable, and uh, has been a you know we talked about just you know, what he's done on, when he's been here on the practice squad. As far as the amount of volume that he's he's had to take over the course of a couple years in practice, just playing safety, playing receiver, playing safety, playing receiver, because uh, we you know, that's what we needed, and so. You know you're going to get a good day, honest day's work from Mason, and I think we all appreciate that. And he's got a great attitude. He's fun to be around. Mike, are you hoping or expecting for Will Loves to be able to play Friday night? Uh, well, I hope. I, I don't know what I expect, but I hope that he can. I don't know if he will or not. When you think of a, a guy like the first team, Lake Harold, and then playing in that third preseason game, what's work, what, what, like how many snaps or plays does he need to make it work then? Try to make those decisions here closer to the game, but haven't really decided and made a final determination. I mean, I think sometimes it's just going through the process of uniform, stadium, you know, being at home, um, pregame, you know, going through the the preparation, getting your mental routine, physical routine of warming up, and then going out there. So. I don't. I don't think it has to be a ton. I think it's based on each individual player, probably. Does the approach for a guy coming off a long-term injury like that, like him, does that change? You know, from previous times, the approach of like how to get him ready. Does it change that he's coming off? He hasn't played in a while. Right. I mean, I, he just was up here. I don't know. Did you? Should have asked him how he's planning he on getting ready. Him, well, then, get, yeah, I mean, then it's his. But I mean, it's like me. It, to it, to no, I'll have a conversation with, with Harold and, and figure out, you know, what I think I need to see and what he feels like he needs to get. That's that's really how it'll go. What is it that you feel you need to see? Uh, some live action, you know, maybe see how he plays different blocks, cut blocks, and, you know. Just being out there and tackling and finishing and just things that he probably doesn't do through the course of practice, you know, as much. I'd probably just see that, I would imagine.
Do you factor a new oh, kicker on. getting used to snapper holder on his first day into the misses, or he need to be we better just out want, of the game? We, we, any kicker that we bring in or that we have on a team just needs to make them. What was it about him down the tape that made you want to bring him in? Uh, we'd had Michael here before, and you know he's got the next crack at it. I'm sure they'll, you know, we'll look at other ones too. Sorry. You talked about last month Mason getting a look in the return game. Has, has Eric Gare shown you enough to, to also get some more looks Friday night returning the football? Yeah, I mean, had had the one I think he bobbled. Yeah, I can't tell him and Marsh to part sometimes. Twenty-five and thirty-three, but. Those guys are competitive, man. They, you know, if they can return, they're tough nickels that trigger in a run game and can blitz, and uh, they, they've been a nice surprise. So, you know, if Eric can can help us in a return game, you know, that would certainly add value to to him and his position. Thanks, guys.